Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert maths teacher so that all your children love their maths and become fluent and creative and confident with it. This is the fourth video in the series on teaching maths to children who are five years old, which is English year one. And it's the first video where we start to look at teaching the numbers above 20, going up towards 100. Quick reminder, you should not have to teach the numbers to 100 to five-year-olds. This was an innovation in our curriculum created by a particularly enthusiastic politician who refused to listen to evidence as to when these things should be taught. But we are where we are and all our teachers have to teach this. And if you live in a country where you don't have to teach it this young, you should still find this video useful. But remember, it's not quite as hard for you. In this video, we will cover the linear structure of the numbers to 100 as tens and ones. And we'll talk about why we're going to teach that with the big B bar or your version of it. And we will also talk about how you teach using your big B bar and what maths you can cover. And then we'll have our tip of the video on listening to children rather than listening for a particular bit of maths or an answer. And you'll start to get some insight into how teachers who use these techniques get their children to do far more than the curriculum. So the structure of number we're focusing on today is the linear representation of the numbers to 100 as tens and ones. And the particular representation we're going to focus on is this big B bar or your version of it. So big I can't even get it in shot. And if you haven't got one of these, then you can make something similar with rope or string and some kind of big beads or hoops. And you'll need 50 of each of two colors of those beads or hoops and you can make your own bit of equipment. So why do we teach this structure of number? Well, children are definitely gonna need it very soon to be able to calculate confidently and fluently. And the best way to prove that is to put a link into a future video that's not created yet, but will be in a few weeks, that really demonstrates in detail why children need this structure. But then the next question people ask me is, why do we need a bit of apparatus like this rather than just using something like a counting stick, which can be used to teach children the same structure of number? And my answer is, that this is suitable if children are seven or over because they have to remember what the starting number on the counting stick was and they have to remember what steps they're counting in. And that's really difficult. It requires a lot of working memory. And if you do this with classes of children who are under the age of seven, some of them will cope fine, but usually you'll find that some won't and they will be trying to mimic the children who are and it's really bad for them. But if you use a big B bar instead, then as you start to count maybe in fives, five, 10, 15, and so on, the children can always see those steps. They're constantly reminded it's steps of five and they can see how far we've got to in numbers. So if they lose their thread of concentration, there's a lot more to hook them in to the maths rather than them needing to focus on what the child next to them is saying. It's much more healthy for your children who are struggling with the fact that they are only five years old. And in fact, when I've been into schools with classes of five-year-olds, their response to this bit of apparatus is so enthusiastic, especially for those children who've really struggled to make sense of number before. When you start showing them and working with them, do you know what 30 is? Can you show me? And they can't. And then you actually show them counting up from 20 and show them the whole 30. It's like light bulbs going on so fast. And if you'd like to see some video of a teacher working on this particular piece of maths with a counting stick, so you can watch that video and see the children who are losing attention and think through how it would be better with the big bead bar, I'll post a link in just a minute. This teacher is an excellent teacher. Her kids are clearly going to be fine. I'm not trying to over criticize her, but I'm just trying to get to this particular insight. If you're going to follow the link, 
please make sure you subscribe to this channel now so you can find it this video again and when you go to the link you're looking for the section of video that's about three minutes to three minutes 30 to really see the point I'm making so here's that link now so what maths can you teach with the big bead bar in year one well of course our first exercises are about moving on from counting to 20 so we'll count up and down in ones four three four five six and so on and we'll get to 20 20 and just pause and let the children have a chat with their talk partners about what that number's going to be called and what might the next number be called and what what's going on here can we predict what that number is going to be called if we've got six white beads What's that number going to be called? We can uh, work with the children who possibly aren't the most confident and get them puzzling it out. And the first day we might we might go as far as 30 and then we can gradually come back, keep working up and down until children become more confident and go beyond 30 and discuss how these numbers are being named as we get up towards 100. So counting up and down in ones and naming numbers. And of course, we don't just have the cardinal numbers. Cardinal numbers, that's four. We also have ordinal numbers. In ordinal numbers, that is the fourth bead. And children need to come across ordinal numbers as well. So we can be very clear about that, what they are. Fourth, fifth, sixth. We can develop that vocabulary and understanding too. So now we want to get to the stage where we can show any number and ask children to name that number using the patterns of naming number that they've discovered. Again, they can talk to their talk partner and come back to you. And you want to focus in particularly on the numbers they're going to struggle to hear clearly, like 40 and 14. Can they tell the difference? Keep coming back to examples like that. 60, 16. So you really tease out the difference and everyone can see it and understand that it's difficult. It's tricky to hear. And if you say a number, can they show it? Can they show that number in beads on the apparatus? They need to be able to. And if you show a number with digit cards, can they show that number in beads? And if you show a number in beads, can they show that number in digit cards? Next, can they show you and discuss and name one or two more or less than any number? So if we look at a number like 28, what will one more be? What will two more be? What will one less be? What will two less be? And we can start to overlay the vocabulary of addition and subtraction onto that challenge. And if you've developed the part, part, whole model properly, you can also look at questions like, what would 28 subtract 26 be? Because they can start to see the 26 disappearing and see the two that's left. That's beyond the curriculum, but it's nice. And if you don't understand about teaching with the part, part, whole model, there's a link to that lesson now. So here's a still frame of the exercises you need to do with the big B bar in year one to cover a lot of the year one curriculum. And you can find the curriculum documents and the term per page planning documents that'll help you plan for yourself and understand how this all fits together in the Expert Primary Maths Teacher Planning Facebook group. They're free to download, everything's free. And finally, this video's tip on how to listen to the maths in children's minds rather than listening for the maths that you're expecting to hear. And today's technique is about getting children to invent their own calculations. So with the big bead bar, you've been doing one more, two more, one less, two less than a number. And you can notate that on the board as additions and subtractions as they work on those problems. And then 
you can ask the children to come up with their own additions or subtractions that they feel they can do and understand using this bit of apparatus. And this will really help you see inside their minds what it is they do and don't understand. And also some of the children will go miles beyond the curriculum and they'll be really powerful learning in your classroom because when one child in a class can do something, lots of other children in that class are going to believe they can do it too because they see that there's a psychological dynamic going on. If he can do it, I can do it. And suddenly they're just flying with maths. They might come up with something like, what about 100 subtract 4? Well, got a whole 100 beads. If we take off 4, we can puzzle out how many are left. And you can write that calculation. And because you have everything going through apparatus, it's much more likely that the rest of the class are going to be able to follow that too and be inspired to do far more than children in other classes would do. So if you like this video, please click on the red subscribe box to subscribe to this channel. If you can't do that, maybe because you don't have a Google account, you might want to copy the URL, the web address for this video and save it somewhere because I don't have any resources to promote these videos. So they don't appear very easily in the search engines and they're not particularly easy for teachers to find. But if you share them with your friends and you comment on them or you click on a like, that will really help other teachers find them. In this video, we've looked at teaching children the numbers up to 100 using the linear structure of tens and ones with the big bead frame as the representation. And we've talked about getting children to invent their own calculations, which is a powerful expert teacher strategy. So now it's time for you to try these strategies in your classroom. I hope you have fun. And if you're able to comment on how it goes, that would be absolutely awesome. In the next video, we'll be looking at introducing the number line in year one. I hope you'll be back with us. Bye for now.